All right, welcome to Burt's Basics. Welcome to my empty room during the summer. This is how I'm hanging out. So hopefully you guys take advantage of these and you can learn as much as you can. So this is the new strand that we're going to be working on. This is our skeletal system, which is super fun, but man, there's going to be a lot of things to memorize. So let's get started with uh, concepts one and two or standards one and two of this unit. So here's what we're going to do. Okay, let me hide myself really quick. So if we're going to do the skeletal system, we need to know a couple things. Number one, identify its general functions. And number two, know the difference between an osteoblast, site, and class. So I'm going to go right into number one. Okay, I don't want to waste too much time with number one because I think you guys should already know these from back in the day. So if you guys look at these, these are the main functions of the skeletal system. And there's a lot. So we have here supports body. You know, we got to make sure we have supports in our day-to-day -day functions. It protects vital organs. So I have my sternum and my ribs protecting my ventral cavity, mostly my thoracic. Okay, I have my uh, cranial bones, which we'll learn about. Okay, protecting my brain. So we do protection. They have to have a spot for muscles to attach is a good one. But this is the one I want to take some time on for a second. Let's talk about storing minerals. Now, I'm going to show you a picture, but I don't want you to freak out. You ready? Okay, once we get to nervous system, I'm going to show you this, and I love this picture, and we're going to learn every single part of this, but I want to show you one thing and one thing only. This is a picture of nerves. For nerves to work, they have to have calcium. They have to have calcium. It is a must. Can I show you another picture? Ah, okay. This is called the sliding filament theory with actin and myosin. You're going to learn this too. This is, comes in the next standard with muscles, okay? But I'm just telling you, this looks crazy, but I only want to focus on one thing. For muscles to contract, you need calcium. So how important is it that we actually have calcium stored in these bones here? So let's get my mouse out. Calcium plus plus ion, cation, by the way, okay? It's a huge storage tank for us. Now, this is deceiving because we know that carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen make up the majority of my body, but I'm telling you, oof, calcium is important. So every time I teach you a further system and something a little more in depth, I'm going to say calcium is needed, calcium is needed, calcium is needed. And some of you are going to say, hey, where did the calcium come from? Well, it came from bones. Okay, It's a huge storage tank. Okay, uh, Chemical energy is nice. Then here's our next big one we want to talk about. AIDS and red blood cell production. Now, I like that, but we're going to change it up a little bit. Okay. Now you need this big word, okay? The magic word is hematopoiesis. Some teachers pronounce it hematopoiesis. So it's just kind of how you learned it, I guess. I think I learned hematopoiesis, but it could be hematopoiesis. This is one of the most important words of the first two units, okay? So I did some midterm for you. So if you guys are midterm people, you're going to like this. We know that heme, hemo is blood, okay? Heme with an E is iron. So we know that heme is blood. And poesis is a new word. Maybe that's a word you guys haven't heard very much. Poesis is making. So when I put heme and poesis, once again, I feel like Sesame Street. You know, like when uh, Grover would take blue and berry and be like, blue, berry, and slide them together. Blue, berry. Okay, that's the same thing here. Heme, poesis. Hematopoiesis is a process of making blood. The process of making blood. The process of making blood. And not some blood. Okay? It makes all of the blood. Now, before I show you this, I don't want you to freak out about that drawing. Okay? That is a very scary drawing. But it's so cool when you learn it. This is way beyond map. So this is a Weber moment. If you guys want to learn this, take Weber. Okay? Let me just give you a quick outrun. If you look at this, this is a chart of hematopoiesis in humans. But if you notice, almost every one of these, all of them, start in the bone marrow. Your bones, your skeletal system is responsible for making all blood. Not just some of it. All of it. All of it. Okay, all red blood cells are made in bone marrow. Platelets are really made in bone marrow. And white blood cells are made in bone marrow. Now, they can mature in other places, but they are made here. They're made here. So when you guys hear about hematopoiesis, I want you not to think of just making red blood cells. I want you to think of making all blood cells. So what if you get a bone marrow infection? Well, then you're in trouble. Okay? And that's why bone marrow is so important. So if we go back a little bit, this chart is amazing because it does tell you about where everything comes from. So if you notice, there's your red blood cells. Okay? There's your platelets. Okay? And then my white blood cells are kind of like all of this over here. Okay? So this is hematopoiesis in humans. Now, to save me some time later, okay, to save me some time later, let me get my face back up on here, okay, um, 
when we talk about blood, which will be in map B, we're going to talk about how there's three cells in blood. And we're going to talk about how there's red, white, and platelets. But we don't call them cells. We don't call them cells. We call them formed elements. So if you ever hear a question that says, what formed element, what formed element, what formed element, what formed element, that's a fancy word for cells in blood. And the reason why we call them formed elements is because, look at this, this is a cell. This is not only a cell, it's a mega cell. So it's gigantic. Mega means big, okay? Karyos, nucleus, and cytus cells. This is a big nucleus cell. And then he blows up into shrapnel. And we call those shrapnels platelets. So platelets aren't really even cells. They're, they're parts of cells. So I can't call them cells. Instead, we call them fragments. And so we call these guys formed elements. Once again, that's just to save me later on. Okay, now let's do our cells. The last thing you need to know is you need to know three cells on these standards, and then this video is done. So if it's okay with you, I want to go back to med term. Now, I'm telling you, med term is important. The more you guys take those classes, oh, you'll be so good. So let's go ahead and see if you guys could do. Could you guys list all four of these on your own? So sitting at home on your computer or on your phone, could you tell me what osteo is? Could you tell me what blast is? Could you tell me what site is? Once you get these, these cells will be a piece of cake. Osteo means bone. Blast means an immature cell, a young cell, a precursor cell, okay? Think of it as like a prerequisite. You know how you, like, you want to take the class you want, but there's a prerequisite underneath it? You've got to have a blast first, and then you can turn into a site. So if we wanted to look at site, so a site, if you want to, we can think of it as an adult. Oh, I'm horrible at writing. Adult. Okay, I need to get something better than writing with a mouse. That's horrible, okay? Adult. Now, class doesn't fit in this. Class is to break or to destroy. So now we can kind of have fun with these words. Like one of your words is osteoblast. Well, that's an immature bone cell. One of the words you have is an osteocyte. Well, that's a adult bone cell. Then my favorite, osteoclast. That's a bone breaker. So let's go ahead and put these guys together. Now, I know that you are all perfect teenagers and amazing, right? But I like to think of it as an osteoblast as a teenager. Okay, uh, someone who love you very much, by the way, if you're watching this, someone who mooches off their parents, lives at home, takes their food, takes their laundry detergent, uh, takes their car. Okay, that's what an osteoblast is. It's a young teenager cell. But the thing is, he's important because the osteoblast actually starts to build the bone. And eventually he's going to grow up and he's going to buy his own apartment. He's going to buy his own car. And then when he grows up, he becomes an osteocyte. So now let's put this in real terms. These are what they actually look like. So an osteoblast, blast being beginning or precursor or young, they start to lay down the bony matrix. And this bone that they're laying down, we'll see pictures of it in the next standard, is called spongy bone. Now eventually they're going to do such a good job that they're going to solidify themselves in solid bone, which we call compact bone. Now this guy has built himself a home. He's not moving very much. So once I've solidified and I, now my job is to maintain the bone, I become an osteocyte. Okay, so that's an osteocyte, which is a mature cell. Okay, so these are the difference. So an osteoblast makes spongy bone. It's a precursor cell. Osteocyte, not as mobile and maintains bone. It's day-to-day -day function. Which then goes to our last cell. Our last cell is the almighty osteoclast. Now, if you guys look at this, let me slide my face over here now. Okay, if you look at this osteoclast, it looks like you could see this, this guy. He started here, he curled around, and he went this way. Okay, there's the cell right there. Okay, but you can see where he went. It's like he's going on snow, right? You can see like, oh, he's traping through the snow. Uh, that's not snow. That's bone. Bone. Pink, pink. Okay, that's a metallic salt. This guy is a producer of acid, and he destroys bone. That's why we call him an osteoclast. He's a bone breaker. And remember how I said muscles need calcium, and nerves need calcium, and everyone needs calcium. Well, this is where I get calcium made available. Okay, so if you want to think of it this way, osteoblasts and site build up the bone, osteoclast destroys the bone. You build up and you destroy, and you build up and you destroy, and that's what bone remodeling is. Basically, it's going to take bone and just remodel it back and forth, okay? So that's it. So let's go ahead and do your questions, okay? So let's take a peek. So those are the objectives you guys just learned. So here is your quiz. Let me hide my face. Okay, so if you guys want to look at these, go ahead and grab a piece of paper. Try to write down the five answers to these questions. I have the answer key on the next slide. And I hope you guys learned something. So come back and watch these videos as much as you need.